going on, everybody? You bet's believe you're back. And today we're going to be talking about Jason Veritek. Now, before I did some research on Veritek, I had pretty low expectations. I mean, he was the captain of the Red Sox, of course, named in 2004. One of the hardest workers that, you know, the team's ever seen. He originally was on the Twins, and but he was, yeah, he was drafted by the Mariners, I believe, because he ended up going back to school. So, pretty similar story to David Ortiz, and then was ended up traded to the Red Sox with Derek Lowell, and then they won the World Series in 2004. Veritek, I knew Veritek obviously had a great career, Hall of Fame worthy, but, you know, I just wasn't sure about all of the hype. You know, so many people like to say that Veritek is, you know, the, you know, not really the greatest Red Sox of all time, but there's just so much praise for him, and a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of criticism, a lot of critics towards Veritek as well, you know, saying that, you know, he's overrated, you know, he wasn't like a legend, but, you know, I'm going to tell you before I even get into the stats and the stories that Veritek was, you know, everything that people made him out to be. He was a great teammate, a great leader. And just ask Pedro Martinez. I mean, Pedro Martinez said, you know, that he was his big hits and great plays behind the plate were the biggest result of the Red Sox breaking the curse in 2004 and, of course, winning the World Series as well in 2007. Veritek was a leader. The Red Sox, you know, the closest thing that they've had, you know, really there's been no one like Veritek as of in the last decade. I mean, Ortiz and Pedroia are great leaders as well, but Veritek just was above and beyond, you know, with his worth ethic. So let's get into it. So Veritek was born on April 11th, 1972. He was traded as a minor league prospect by the Seattle Mariners. Veritek played his entire career in MLB, of course, for the Boston Red Sox, and he is now working as a special assistant for the team. But today we are going to be breaking down Tech's career and answering the common question, was Jason Veritek overrated? Now, I apologize for my mic. Number one, this is just a standard mic, and my computer's actually about to die. I'm having, oh no, it's actually, I'm having difficulties with my charger, so if this, if you're listening to this video, then that means it didn't die, but, so let's get right into it. I will be getting, once I start getting more, like, subs and, and um, views and things like that, I will get a new mic, but for now, we're going to have to live with it, so. I'm also, like, above my mic, like, I'm in a chair, and my computer's, like, on the ground, so it has to charge like that. So in December of 2004, he was named, Veritek was named the captain of the Red Sox, and he marked their fourth captain since 1923, and he was a switch hitter, much like Jorge Basadi, you know, but, you know, Veritek was a much better, not really a much better, but he was definitely a better catcher than Jorge Posada. you know, Posada, you know, did not have the leadership that Veritek had, I mean, Veritek, he worked insanely hard, you know, to get to where he was, I mean, he he struggled. He wasn't, you know, it wasn't like he was tearing it up every season. He had up and down, but then finally he started clicking in, I would say, 2003. So, but we're going to get into the facts and all of that. So, um, Veritek is one of the only three players, uh, along with Michael Conforto. Oh, I actually didn't know that. Ed Vosberg, if I pronounced that wrong, Vosberg. So, those two and Veritek, you know, to play in the Little League World Series, College World Series, and Major League World Series. And he also participated in the Olympic Baseball and World Baseball Classic. That's really cool. And Veritek caught an MLB record for no hitters, and um, which was later tied by Carlos Ruiz. So the thing is, is like I am not a baseball wizard. You know, I don't know everything about the Red Sox or about baseball. I have to research. You know, I do. I haven't gone into any of these videos without any research. The point is, is to like educate not only you guys but myself. For those of you that don't know much about Veritek, I mean. I'm hopefully you learned something today, and I'm assuming that everybody learned at least one thing that I said so far, because I don't think anybody knew that Pedro Martinez said that Veritek was the most important figure in the 2004 run, and um, also, you know, Veritek and A-Rod's fight that you guys saw in the beginning of that video, you know, let's keep in mind here that that sparked the Red Sox season, because in the second half of that season, the Red Sox ended up going on, you know, a insane, you know, like, rampage, and they had the best record in all the baseball in that second half, and it carried on to the playoffs, you know. Okay, so to continue on, uh, early on in Veritek's career, he played two summers in the Cape Cod Baseball League with the Hyannis, or Hyenas, Hyannis, yeah, Mets, sorry, I am, apologize for that, I'm not even gonna edit that, whatever, I've made so many mistakes in these videos, I'm still, like, new to YouTube, I mean, I have a YouTube channel with 2,100 subscribers, but it's not anything like this, so... I can't, oh my god. In 1993, he hit 371 while winning both the league batting championship and MVP. He was drafted 21st overall in the first round by the Minnesota Twins in 1993, but he opted to return to his senior year of college. Following graduation, Veritek signed with agent Scott Boris, of course, you know, the agent of J.D. Martinez and Eric Cosmer, and was drafted by the Seattle Mariners in the first round of the 1994 amateur draft with the 14th pick. 
a pioneer of the loopholes in the draft process, Veritek signed with the St. Saint Paul Saints in the Independent Northern League before agreeing to terms with the Mariners and consequently did not enter the Mariners minor league system until 1995, so a year later. When he was finally uh, there, Veritek was sent to the AA affiliate Port City Roosters where he met pitcher and lifelong teammate Derek Lowe. He was traded with Lowe to the Red Sox during the 1997 season in return for reliever Heathcliff Slocum. Uh, often cited as one of the best trades in Red Sox' favor in recent history, and I am here to say that that was probably the best trade for the delay. The actually, um, the second I one that comes to my mind, I had to stop for a quick, uh, brief second. So the second trade that comes to my mind is the trade that when the Red Sox acquired Josh Beckett and Mike Lowell from the Miami Marlins for Hanley Ramirez, and the reason why that's not number one on my list is because Hanley Ramirez had a great career. And, of course, right now he's aging and doesn't have the speed that he had. But, you know, Hanley had all-star type seasons, you know, really good seasons and was one of the best players in Marlin history. So, you know, that wasn't necessary. It definitely was a steal for the Red Sox because they got Lowell, who, you know, of course, was the World Series MVP in 2007. They got Josh Beckett in ace, and it led to that. And the Marlins didn't win a World Series after getting Hanley, so the Red Sox win that trade. But, you know, the number one is, you know, of course, you got to go – Jason Veritek, I mean, they didn't give up anything special, and they got, you know, Derek Lowell, who was a hero in the world, in the um, ALCS, you know, when he, he pitched Game 7, of course, in Yankee Stadium, and, you know, he was also, you know, good all, consistent all season, you know, definitely, you know, he, almost like a John Lackey type of role, if you think of him back then, so, and um, this is just a Ness and, like, short documentary on Jason Veritek, you know, I have to put this in because I can't, you know, keep putting in highlights because I'm going to get, um, copyrighted and you know getting copyrighted is annoying because it's basically like it's a pointless to make a video if it's going to get copyrighted i'm not here to make money i'm here to have fun and to um, educate people on the red sox and just to keep you know spreading the community you know because i love the red sox and i know you guys love them too so so to continue on early and uh well we just talked about how he um played two summers with the hyenas or the hyenas as i said before i wanted to edit that out but it would just mess up the video i've said so many um words incorrectly it doesn't matter at this point so, um, basically, uh, Veritek, to continue on, he was called up on September 24th of 1997, and this is with the Red Sox, and he collected a single in his only at-bat. During the 1998 season, Veritek split time with uh, catcher Scott Hatberg. Hatberg, I don't know, like, I, I wasn't around during this time, I wasn't even born, so... Um, and in 86 games, uh, Veritek showed signs of things to come in the season, and with strong spring training the following season, Veritek earned the starting catching position. 1999 was a breakout year for him. He played in 144 games, and he hit 269 with 20 home runs and 76 RBIs. Keep in mind, Veritek is a 256 career hitter, which is pretty average, but, you know, he had up and down seasons, so, you know, you got to keep that in mind. And he, um, all, yeah, he had 20 home runs, 76 RBIs. He went 5 for 21 with 3 RBIs in the 1999 ALDS against the Indians and went 4 for 20 with an RBI in the ALCS with New York against the New York Yankees. Of course, nothing I, you know, I like bottling, you know, nothing insane, but, you know, it was the consistency and Veritek was starting to find himself. So, and he was always more of a defensive catcher, you know, and you can ask like Pedro, guys like Pedro Martinez and other pitchers, you know, what they have to say about him. And uh, looking forward on building more success from the year before, the 2000 uh, season was a disappointment offensively as Veritek hit 248 and ha only hit 10 home runs and 65 RBIs as the Red Sox didn't even make the postseason. And that went on for three years. So, and prior to the 2001 season, Veritek signed a three-year, $14.9 million contract. And it really wasn't until 2003 where Veritek started to like, turn things on and find the switch and figure out who he was, become consistent. And uh, yeah, Veritek went on a hitting streak and... The audio, the video is gone, so I'm gonna have to replace that. So he went on a hitting streak and he hit 310 at one point. And on May 20th, 2001, he homered three times in a single game before breaking his left elbow. And he was sidelined for nearly the rest of the season as Veritek dove to catch a foul ball on June 7th. The play went on to be a top web gem for the month of July in 2001, but unfortunately enough, it of course cost him the injury. Veritek finished the season with a 293 average, 7 home runs, and 25 RBIs in 51 games played. And you have to imagine that Veritek would only put those numbers up. I mean, that's insane for a catcher. That's, you know, not Buster Posey-like, but that's really good for a catcher to put up those numbers. In 51 games, you know, to hit, have 25 RBIs, 7 home runs, and hit 293, and of course with his elite defense. 
And Veritek returned to the Red Sox lineup full-time in the 2002 season, and his return wasn't the greatest. You know, he struggled to find himself at the plate, and he didn't reach his full offensive potential. Pitchers and coaches alike, you know, began to notice how much Veritek's preparation and knowledge of the game was helping pitchers, of course, and this is where his, you know, story starts to be, you know, unfolded. In his study habits and extra hours of work with pitchers would soon become his defining attribute. Veritek and the Red Sox entered the 2003 season with a renewed fire to reach the playoffs because they had missed it the last three years, as I mentioned before. Veritek started to become a leader in the clubhouse, which management tried to portray as working class. And there were a ton of new faces in that 2003 team. Kevin Millar, David Ortiz, Bill, you know, Bill, Billy Miller, uh, Todd uh, Walker, and of course, you know, uh, the um, returning you know, original players, Trot Nixon. And Lou Merloni, like I said, if I pronounce any names wrong, just let me know down below. And uh, yeah, 2003 was by far Veritek's best year. He was an all-star. The fans voted him in. He hit 296, 15 home runs, and 51 RBIs. And he uh, was sitting on at the all-star break. Uh, yeah, so he hit 296 heading into the all-star break. He finished with 273, 25 home runs, and 25, uh, 185 RBIs. Sorry, there's just so much info here. I'm kind of speaking too quickly, so I'll try to slow down. 273 average, 25 home runs, and 85 RBIs. Uh, those were, of course, all career highs, and the Red Sox earned a wild card berth in their first playoff appearance since 1999. And um, we're not going to discuss what results happened in that season. Of course, they lost in 2003, the LCS to the Yankees. But Veritek, you know, um, compiled a career high 296 average, 18 home runs, and 73 RBIs. So, pretty good. And um, 2004 is when. You know, I didn't want this video to be that this long, but it is. So, in 2004 is the story, really, that, you know, gives Jason Veritek the credit that I'm giving him today, and a lot of people do. July 24th, Veritek shoved his glove into the face of Yankees' Alex Rodriguez after A-Rod was hit by a pitch and gestured towards pitcher Bronson Arroyo, yelling, you know, things at him that he shouldn't have. I mean, I'm sure Veritek was saying things as well, but it was, you know... I mean, A-Rod, you know, A-Rod's A-Rod, you know, we're not going to get into him, but... And this caused a bench-clearing brawl, and they were both ejected, but, you know, the Red Sox ended up coming back to win that game 11-10, to and like I said before, the Red Sox had the best record in the seven, second, what am I saying? The Red Sox had the best record in the second half of that season, and it was mostly, you know, thank, you know thanks to Veritex, you know, heroics, you know, to stand up against A-Rod, you know, one of the best players in baseball, you know, MVP, protect his teammate, you know, we hadn't really seen anything like that. I mean, the Yankees, you know, were a super team. I mean, they really were. And the Red Sox were not supposed to have a chance in 2003 or 2004, but they did. So, and, you know, yeah, so uh, the Red Sox would end up going on to win their first World Series in 86 years. And they were the first team to ever overcome a 3 to none deficit in baseball in the LCS against the Yankees. And uh, at the end of the year, Veritek would sign a four-year, $40 million uh, contract with the Red Sox. And it was because of his performance on and off the field. And the Red Sox would give him the captaincy, the franchise. So that's all I have. You know, we could go on to, you know, 2007 and on. But I just wanted to explain a short story about Veritek. But it's already almost 15 minutes long. Um, I like the beginning of this video. I apologize. You know, like, there's not really professional at all. I will um, continue to improve. You know, I really wanted to get the story out, and I know you guys did too. My next video will be about, it's either going to be um, about, it's it's probably going to be Pablo Sandoval. I want to talk about him. But if you have any suggestions, comment down below. Um, somebody re uh, requested a Christian Vasquez video, and I was going to do it, but I don't know where, really what to talk about. I mean, Vasquez has improved so much, but it, it's definitely a huge part because he's working with the Molina brothers. This is Yvette's Believe. Please like the video and share it with any of your friends that are interested in the Red Sox or just learning more about baseball. And guys, once again, have a great issue day. Thank you.